one who uh who have been patient um yeah we we faced unfortunately a few technical issues and so we had to take a bit of time um so first and foremost i'd like to welcome uh comrade and dr adi samara it's really nice to see you uh I'll bite through the screen we are both based in the west bank i'm in the south of the west bank he's in the north and we haven't been able to see each other because of the situation um, uh, mobility is denied to Palestinians in the West Bank, and uh, it's not easy to to move from one place to another. We live in uh, segregated islands, uh, militarily heavily and heavily heavy military uh, policing by the Israeli occupation army. So um, we are on day 176 of genocide in Gaza. So I hope that we all take a moment to just think about Gaza and uh, the people who continue to endure uh, the brutality of the Zionist uh, uh, regime, uh, genocidal machine. Uh, so I'm really pleased to have Dr. Uh, and Comrade Adel Samara with us uh, tonight. He's a distinguished uh, thinker, political analyst, and uh, prominent organic intellectual. Um, Dr. Adel Samara was born in 1944. Uh, he holds a PhD in political economy and development from the University of Exeter. He spent between 1963 to 1997, so that's eight to eight and a half years in jail. Uh, he was jailed by Jordanian regime, by the Israeli occupation, and the, also the Palestinian Authority for his political thinking and activities. Uh, he played a massive role in the Arab nationalist movement before 1967, and he is one of the founders of the PFLP, uh, P uh, Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, after 1967. Uh, he was uh, never allowed to teach in Palestinian universities, and we will hear more about uh, Dr. Adel, uh, Adel's uh, uh, journey um, you know, dealing with uh, the Zionist regime, but also the internal uh, Comprador class in Palestine. Amongst, he's written so much in, in Arabic and also in English. I will list uh, some of his writings in English. The, he's written the books uh, Arab Regime, Arab's Enemy, uh, Beyond the Delinking, Development by Popular Protection versus Development by State, uh, The Epidemic of Globalization, Women versus Capital in the Social Formation in Palestine. And uh, he's also uh, the editor in chief of uh, a magazine, an online magazine that you can access called Canaan Online, uh, where you can also find a lot of his writings, but also other comrades uh, on Palestine and other issues in relation to imperialism and the region. So I'm really very uh, enthusiastic to have Dr. Adel with us tonight, and uh, uh, his uh, talk tonight will shed uh, light on the Zionist Ash Ashkenazi uh, entity and uh, how it terminated the economic structure of the occupied West Bank and Gaza. And then he will also uh, look um, discuss the role and uh, failures of the Palestinian uh, intellectuals. And he will talk about what he means by the Palestinian engaged uh, intellectual. So there is a lot to learn tonight from our speaker. So please uh, uh, tune in and uh, be ready to ask questions and pose them for us uh, either in the chat uh, Oh, that's the option, right? To pose the questions in the chat, and then we will have a uh, time for uh, Q&A. So, Dr. Adel, ahla uh, sahla, Ramadan Kareem, the floor is yours. Thank you, Isam, and thank you, Wala. Uh, by the way, today is the land day. It is in Palestine, and also in 1976, it is all at the same time in South Africa, and, I mean, the, 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 in the same, same year in both countries. First of all, I would to apologize for my uh, yani poor English, but not poor uh, spirit, if you like. Uh, I would like to start to, to say something about the nature of the Zionist Ashkenazi regime. Uh, this regime, in fact, is a regime which is living under supporting machine since its beginning until now. Uh, financed, militarized, by the by imperialism and by Zionist Arab regimes as well. Uh, 
uh, it is a case of sifting a country with all of it, of all of what in the country except the people. They affected our people 19 or most of our people 1948. And uh, also this regime, according to what happened in the last six months, that this regime is unable to produce the not only its weapons, I mean, <clears throat> to produce any form of, of, of material uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, tools so as to, to fight or to practice his genocide against the, the Palestinians in Gaza. That's why they are directly imported from Germany, from Holland, from the for sure for from the United States, etc. Uh, it is a, a country or it's an entity which is living by or on, uh, if you like, uh, donations or rent. 35 of the GDP of the regime, of the Zionist regime, is in fact from abroad or from outside. Uh, in addition to that, also, since about 70 years, this, this regime never able to have a, a joint culture for all the, its people, because they are coming from about 100 nations. It is, it is some form of your life of the United Nations. That's why it is impossible for this uh, regime or for this country to have, uh, 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 I mean, uh, a joint culture for all of the, all, all of the settlers, uh, because all the, the, the Zionists in Palestine are settlers. If they are secular, if they are religious, etc., et it, is, it is the same. In 1967, the Zionist regime occupied the rest of Palestine. By the way, uh, the plan of, of occupying the, the West Bank was, I mean, designed or decided by the Zionists in 1963. And I still remember at that time that the three officers in the Jordanian army, sometimes they delay to make a coup d'etat against the regime, the, the monarchy, because they said that if we did that, the, the Zionists will occupy the West Bank. Finally, in 1967, the West Bank has been I mean, occupied by the Zionist regime. Directly, after a few days of the occupation of the West Bank and Gaza Strip in 1967, the, all the area put under military governorate. And the military governorate issued until the, today about 2,000 military orders, which is cover all aspects of life in Palestine, agriculture, industry, uh, export, import, uh, uh, marketing, everything, all of the market related or, I mean, tailed to the Israeli uh, economy. In addition to that, so as to, to, to make some form of, of annexing or uh, annexing the social classes in the West Bank and Gaza, and because there is no chance for any export or import directly from the West Bank and Gaza Strip from abroad, the Zionist regime, I mean, waited about six months until the market became empty. And that's why we were obliged to import from the uh, Israeli or the, the Zionist products. Uh, the merchants start importing from the Zionist regime. The owners of some factories who, uh, who need uh, raw material, uh, spare parts, new machines, also obliged to, to import either from the Zionist regime or through the, the Zionist regime. This is some form of, you know, annexing all the social classes and so the social structure of the West Bank and Gaza with the regime, with the Zionist regime. At that time, there was a discussion between the Israelis or the Zionists about how to, uh, what form of relationship would, must be between the West Bank, Gaza, and the occupied Palestine in 1948, which is called the, the Zionist regime. Uh, there were two theories, one by uh, Moshe Dayan, the war minister of the regime at that time of the of the occupation, he said that we have to open the borders between the two parts of Palestine so as to import to to absorb the working power, the surplus working power of the Palestinians, so as they did not let them go to, to support or to be recruited by the uh, resistance movement, and at the same time. <laughs> Uh, this this theory designed also to to keep the bridges opened with the Jordanian regime so as to or as a mere beginning for normalization between the Zionist regime and some Arab 
regimes who are ready to normalize with the, with the occupation. That's why the normalization started so early or very early, not in the last few, few years. This relation, economic relationship between the West Bank, Gaza, and the occupied uh, and the occupation, which I call it, you know, militarized and equal exchange. It is an equal exchange under weapons or by force, by military force. Accordingly, also every part of the West Bank or Gaza, every city or every uh, every district, in fact, became related directly with the Zionist market. Before that, there was a, 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 an economic heart, if you like, for Palestine or for the West Bank and Gaza, like to say Hebron, Al-Khalil, or Nablus. But during the occupation, every, each part is related forcefully with the Zionist uh, uh, economy. Accordingly, uh, a new form of <coughs> dependent classes I mean, developed through that this relation. It is the Comprador, Palestinian Comprador, which is the second edition or version of Comprador, if you like. Because before 1967, there was a Comprador of the of, of uh, I mean, in Jordan and the West Bank, <coughs> and related to the Jordanian regime. Under the occupation, we have the new version or the new edition of Comprador, who are the people who are related politically and inter uh, because of their in interest with the with the occupied uh, force and also the subcontract uh, capitalistic group or faction which is the I main parts and you know doing most of the work uh, or of the production in the west bank and also just it is covered by an israeli label and uh, exported to outside especially in the cloth and, tex and textile this means that all the economics uh, i mean uh, economic activities in the West Bank and Gaza Strip became some form of a small reverse, which is going directly to the uh, to the to the capitalist pool of the occupation, because we are import from them and we export or sell to them, and also our banks are became parts of the of the banks of the Israeli of the Israeli banks. All the relations between the banks in the West Bank and Gaza stopped and also related or connected with the uh, two Israeli banks. It is uh, the Bank of Lumi, and uh, I, I did not remember the other one. Uh, <clears throat> now, all the surplus in the West Bank and Gaza, all the remittances from abroad, all the wages of the Palestinian workers inside the occupied regime, uh, in the, inside occupation, inside the West Bank, or even abroad, uh, have to be channeled towards the economic pool or economic capitalist pool of the of the occupation. Uh, as for the, the resistance, our people started resisting the occupation directly after 1967, because it is in fact related to the Palestinian resistance since 1917, before the the mere beginning or or I mean establishment establishing of the Zionist regime. Uh, but at the same time, the, the occupation continued its policy of you know, repression and also uh, strangled the Palestinian economy. That's why uh, it was very rarely to have, a, a, if you like, a new license for a factory, if you like, or to, to uh, I mean, to exploit your land in a proper manner. Uh, this is the, the, the dangerous of the annexation of the West Bank and Gaza Strip to the uh, Israeli economy. The main change which took place is the Intifada of 1978. Some people call it the first Intifada. It is not the first Intifada. It is the largest Intifada. It is the Intifada of all the people. But our Intifada is, is part of our resistance since a long, long time. After or during this Intifada, a lot of people uh, of, of Palestinian workers stopped working in the, in the occupation uh, black economy or black sectors. Uh, they start exploit, re exploiting uh, the land, starting uh, cooperatives in, uh, as if you like, productive uh, cooperatives or even home cooperatives, which you know, uh, done or conducted by women, by Palestinian women, and also producing the basic needs of the Palestinian society. But unfortunately, this form of development, which I call it development by popular protection, uh, must have some support 
or loans or easy lo loans from the local capitalists or the or from the leadership of PLO in Beirut. But both parts did not contribute or did not support this new activity. While in fact, يعني, our uh, activity, uh, our Palestinian activity in the West Bank and Gaza during the first two, three years of Intifada made a properly an economic problem for the for the Zionist regime. By the way, once I made some for, some uh, some for, some form of uh, estimation, and I found that about seventy five thousand uh, Jewish workers working inside the occupation, so as to produce the goods which we are imported from the Zionist uh, economy. Uh, unfortunately, after the third years or third year of Intifada, as you know, or many people know that the leadership of, of the of PLO started you know, negotiations with the uh, Zionist regime until uh, they signed Oslo Accords in uh, 1993. And it is terminated all the boycotts which we started or which we built against the Zionist economy and a lot of the land have been you know neglected because uh, the cost of living is so high and uh, people needs a lot of money so as to uh, cover their at least basic needs uh, many people call that peace the peoples of courageous i think that it is the peace the peace of capital between the palestinian capitalists and the zionist regime or the zionist capitalists in the in the form of a trickle down economy that uh, the Zionists are standing, uh, sitting on the table, and the Palestinian capitalist just, you know, takes or collects the remittances down on the floor. Uh, <clears throat> this is briefly about the political uh, economic situation under the, the occupation. The second part of my speech is about the engaged intellectual. In fact, mainly, uh, I'm sorry to say that it I'm, try, I'm trying to design or talk about my personal experience, either in the political or in the theoretical, or if you like, in the militant uh, levels or, or uh, areas. Uh, always, I believe that the engaged intellectual is a stand behind his uh, consciousness, like the guerrilla fighter who stands behind his gun. That's why the engaged intellectual never leave his position, never never leave his uh, his his uh, duty, and never even and uh, retired, retired. Sorry. Uh, he is a militant who's like who's fighting all his life continuously without uh, any form of, of of hesitation. Some of the militants, in fact, designed or or divided their life into uh, three or four stages. The first 20 years, they are still in the so in the in the university in the schools and and university, etc. The second 20 years, he's he participated in in a political or military struggle. The third 20 20 years, he resigned or became lazy, and some of some became or even region revisionist or even betray the cause. The engaged intellectual continued his life as he is. I mean, all the four periods of life are connected with each other, supporting each other, and completing each other. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the, uh, the engaged intellectual is not only myself. I might be that, but I'm talking about the, the real in the engaged intellectuals. They did not fear the arrest. They uh, are strong during uh, interrogation, during investigation. Uh, bearing the torture and have a high spirit, strong spirit, patience, and <clears throat> have a nerves which is able to bear all this, I mean, difficulties, if you like. And also in, in the form of living, the, the engaged intellectual is in fact live in austerity and he bear that. He is not a consumerist, if you like. And for him, uh, <clears throat> and he is a nationalist as well. Nationalist because during the era of national liberation, the engaged intellectual is really a nationalist one, but he is a communist. And if you go back to the uh, communist manifesto, you will find that 
Marx never said that you know nationalism and Marxism are contradiction uh, are in contradiction. It depends on the period and it depends on the situation of this of this uh, I mean country or or that. But he is he is against the people or the organizations of politicized uh, religion. The organizations which is used the religion as a constitution for itself as 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 a regime uh, as a uh, I mean party, and also he is again revisionists and uh, with the revisionists all the time we have a, a a lot of long battles, but mainly the engaged intellectual is against the liberals, the liberals in the West Bank and Gaza if you like they are I consider them there some articulations of the Labour Party of the of the Zionist regime which was led uh, by many of the well-known, uh, I mean, Zionists, especially Shem'on Beres. Uh, they are marketing, always marketing the marketing the uh, normalization, uh, the negotiations. And, <coughs> sorry. Uh, and they uh, as uh, were the first groups or individuals who, who started uh, secret negotiations with the Zionist uh, regime before Oslo. Uh, <coughs> that's why the, the engaged intellectual all the time is in a fight with those people. Uh, even in the economic field, since the mere beginning, the uh, liberal economists were arguing for the integration of the West Bank Gaza Strip with the Israeli or with the Zionist economy. I mean, they are, uh, I mean, Dependence in the in the levels of you know economic thought, politics, and uh, even the fate of the Palestinian people. Also, the the engaged intellectual is not or against the public intellectual as uh, a Palestinian figure, uh, very revisionist. His name Azm Bishara. He said that the, the intellectual is a common or public one, like the يعني, like a taxi cab, if you like. And also, uh, the intellect, uh, the engaged intellectual, is not similar to the intellectual of, of Edward Said, who uh, is uh, as an elliptical one, not Marxist and not nationalist as well. Also, he is not the the, the intellectual of Adorno. Adorno, who is saying that there is no no homeland, there is a place for us. Uh, uh, I mean, the 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 homeland is not a mere uh, place, and that's it. Also, the, the engaged intellectual is different from that of Descartes. Descartes, who is saying that I am thinking, then, then I am exist or I am available. Because the, the engaged intellectual is fighting, he's in the field, and he is, he is existed as a, uh, as a practical factor, as a, I mean, a, as a militant. Uh, the engaged intellectual against the three levels or forms of normalization, against the normalization between or with the Zionist Ashkenazi regime, against the normalization with the Arab regimes who are Zionized regimes, and also against the regimes or countries who are supporting and creating and supporting the Zionist uh, regime. Uh, the engaged intellectual, in fact, in a problem in, in, in fight with the uh, political organizations who, I mean, fall into uh, negotiations for uh, elections <laughs> under occupation, under the democratic occupation, uh, which is very, very uh, un un unbelievable. Also, the, one of the duties of the uh, engaged intellectual is to be very loyal to the people who believe in him, to his students, or to the people who consider him as a symbol or as a figure. He did not betray, and he insisted did not betray the confident of, I mean, of those people with, with him. He is, if you like, for, as examples, he is Hassan Kanafani, he is Najid Ali, and he is also Basil Al-Araj. Basil Al-Araj, who, I mean, he's a martyr before a few years, I think in 1917, and he one of the pioneers of starting the individual operations against the occupation, as a tool or as a mechanism so as to raise the ceiling of struggle during the era of defeat. And in addition to that, 
بس الاعرج واز ان فيري انتلكتشوال هي ريد ا لوت اوف 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 ماتيريال اوف اباوت لينين مارس اند سبيشلي اباوت جرامشي اند روت اباوت ذات اند هي هي فايت انتل هي بيكيم مارتيا Also, the 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 uh, engaged intellectual is a critical against the women who are part of the re of the regimes of the capitalist patriarchal patriarchal regimes. They have a good jobs, but they are in the service of the regime. And also, <coughs> in addition to that, the the engaged intellectual, if you like. His mind and his position is demanded or wanted by the by the pro, uh, progressive regimes, and his neck is in, is wanted by the reactionary regime. That was he's in trouble or is he, or he's in a problem with both. Uh, the intellectual, the engaged intellectual as well, is is very or uh, I mean insist to not be lured by the. Regimes by NGOs by the occupation, especially the occupation, because the occupation since the mid beginning of 1967 start working or collecting or building a relationship with the, some academic and intellectual Palestinians, so as to relate them to to the to the uh, Zionist regime, especially as I said before, with the Labour uh, Party, which especially. Uh, uh, this point or this issue was conducted or under the sponsorship of Shamoun Beres, one of the of the, I mean, uh, prime ministers of the of the occupation, and this man was following all the writings of the of the engaged intellectuals in Palestine and also in Arab countries, and he uh, protested to Hosni Mubarak of Egypt and to the Palestinian leadership against this and against that, which means that they were following us in every. Single inch. Also, the engaged intellectual against the theory of, of Brzezinski, as you know, that Brzezinski once wrote that we have to take, uh, uh, I mean, the, the nationalist intellectuals from the liberation movement so as to leave them without a heart or without uh, uh, without a mind. Also, the engaged intellectual is in a fight with the, the a group of intellectuals whom I call the intellectuals of the Sixth Brigade. They are, uh, uh, I mean, intellectuals who are, who are betraying the cause, who are looking or or uh, theorizing for a joint state, state, even with the settlers, not only 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 with the with the Israelis. That's why all the time they they said that we are. They call us, you know, stonehead or wooden wooden heads. Uh, <laughs> I would like to to finish, and I will um, open for for questions. To to mention only one point that after the seventh of Tishrin or October, the main or the most important, I mean, results which which we realize it or which we put it that the internalization of defeat ideology is really finished. Thank you. Thank you. Yatik al uh, Dr. Adil uh, Samara, uh, so much uh, food for thought. Uh, I have many questions and I'm sure Isam also has many questions, but also I just want to remind our audience, you can also write your questions in the chat uh, or the Q&A, Isam, uh, I'm not sure, yeah, the chat or Q&A and then we, yeah, we will read them out and uh, uh, yeah, we will get the answers. But uh, just, um, I Two, two, main, two questions for now from me. The first one, um, you mentioned uh, the way that the Palestinian economy has become very much linked to the Zionist, uh, to, to the Zionist labor market. And this is very essential, especially for people in America and Europe. And there is a lot of talk about boycott and boycott as, uh, as a tactic being used, right? And also, um, but when we talk structurally about how Palestine and, uh, and when, in the case of the West Bank and Gaza, they've become very much linked to the uh, to the Zionist economy. How much now we are at a historical moment here internally, especially that we know that a lot of Palestinian laborers and you and I, we are in the West Bank and we've seen a lot of laborers, uh, workers uh, who used to work in Israel, uh, 
they, they've been laid off. Uh, they, there are thousands of them now that they have been laid off with no job uh, uh, in Israel anymore and uh, facing difficult economic situation on the one hand. On the other hand, it makes me also think of something you, you theorized and wrote about, the, your concept of resistance economy um, under the term of insihab or withdrawal from the uh, economy of the enemy. So, but again, we have the West Bank, we have the, the, in the West Bank, we have the PA apparatus, the Palestinian Authority apparatus. And we know very much how difficult it is to navigate boycott or to navigate strategies uh, for popular development uh, beyond the Oslo regime as well. We've heard recently that Israel is threatening even in terms of the Palestinian banks to cut them off the global banking system. So this shows how much also we are, you know, in the hands of, of Israel on that structural level. So how do we navigate this moment? How do you read this moment uh, in terms of the, of the resistance uh, economy? And then I have another question, but let's, let's start okay. with that. But these are a series of questions, not one question, by the way. You have to pay five dollars at least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll pay, I'll pay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, uh, as for boycotting, in fact, during the Intifada of 1987, we started a real good economy, uh, which I called it, you know, the development by popular protection, which is, you know, a development which participated, launched by the people themselves, the, the production is local and the consumption is local. And we, in fact, designed, if you like, a, a, a local or national law of value because all the exchange was internal. And we, in fact, became, or we, we cut our relations with the Zionist market or, or with the, if you like, with the world market. Unfortunately, as I said, that the Oslo Accords, you know, destroyed all these things. And I remember I, I, I was in a clash with a lot of writers who were criticizing my ideas about, you know, boycotting or, or at least try to relatively uh, achieve some form of, of boycotting. At that time, we achieved a lot. Anyway. Now, and by the uh, internal withdrawal, which is part of my of my uh, ideas, that you know, first of all, and this is the good thing that the own the first part of the people who withdraw from the Israeli economy are the workers from the mere beginning of the Antifada, and after them the women, because the women you know start did not buy. The, the 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 products or the goods of the of the occupation because you you know that the women are the people the part who you know I mean uh, I mean by the the needs of the of the of the families and when the woman to, told her son that don't take this don't take that it is a very good I mean practical uh, I mean uh, behavior or uh, policy now. If we jump to the to this to the uh, to to this moment, unfortunately, you know, the, the first of all, the Palestinian Authority never tried to to design at least a, a a reform economic policy, not to say a development policy. It might be because you know the, their its economists are you know, too much indulged in the in the ideas of the World Bank. And by the way, the Palestinian Authority or the Palestinian entity, if you like, is the first in history, which has started its life directly according to the prescriptions of the World Bank, which is unbelievable. And after 100 nations destroyed by the, the ideas of the World Bank, we started our mere <laughs> beginning by the World Bank. Uh, now, because you know, there was no, and also by the way, in, in Oslo Accords, especially in Paris Protocol 1995, there is a, a, an item which is saying that the Israeli economy or the Israeli regime will allow 100,000 Palestinian workers to work inside the economy of, the, of, of Israel, if you like, which is I mean, some form of you know, strengthening dependency. The, in fact, the, the policy must be must be the, the opposite that we have to to start you know, a, a local, I mean, uh, in, uh, investment or or local uh, I mean uh, 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 lands or farms etc cetera, etc. Cetera. 
because but since 1993 until now we did not have or uh, i mean uh, or we did not apply the theory of you know development by proper protection and also we did not apply uh, if you like a, 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 an intellectual intifada which is uh, which I, I wrote about that in 1983 and 84 but uh, uh, you know, they they they, they never you know, try to listen to the storm hits. Now, when when COVID started before a few years, also I wrote a lot that at least now all over the world there is a problem. I mean, uh, or there is a great need for food for uh, agricultural production, and we have we must try to you know to exploit land. To, so as at least to produce uh, part of the basic needs, I mean, because you know that uh, food security is more important uh, than, than if you like political security. But you know, uh, nobody here, and the, the problem also that the political organizations also did not adopt that, that uh, orientation or that paradigm, did not try to apply it. Very few number of people, young people, who were asking for that, and I wrote to them a special book about uh, about cooperatives. In fact, anyway, now it is really difficult, especially because the workers who were working inside the occupied uh, with the, uh, the occupied 1948 area still have some money, you know, because their their salaries are, or their wages are better than the wages of the people in the West Bank. But now. They themselves and the workers in the West Bank, and if you like, the, the 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 owners of factories, the lawyers, most of the people are crying because the economic situation is really severe. Uh, I I never pretend that we are able to be a, I mean a totally dependent on ourselves, you know. But at least we must try, uh, I mean, as early as possible to achieve that. But in, in, uh, in fact, you know, Either the the Oslo regime or the political organizations uh, decide or adopt that policy. As for the banks, I doubt that you know most states will will be able to do that. You know because it is some it, it is a problem for our uh, banks, but at the same time it is some form you know of dealing king from the Israeli economy. And this is this is because one of the a lot of discussions took place since 20, 30 years that. The Palestinians must start to, to have their own currency and their own central bank, etc. etc. I doubt you know, that, but you know, this madman is unable to think properly. Yeah, what was the, the, the second question? Uh, yeah. Isam, since I asked many questions in one, do you want to go ahead? Because I because um, I also seen in the QA people are posing questions. So yes. go ahead, yours and um, so before I jump to Azhar's uh, question, um, which was typed in the q and I invite other people to type their questions. I just have one quick one, and it has to do with kind of ideological mapping or mapping how people and countries and nations in the region are mapping themselves on a geopolitical scale. And what I mean by this is how can we understand the role of Gulf countries in, and, and obviously there are variations amongst them, in being a functionary of imperialism, impeding imperialism or um, or being pragmatic as a lot, a lot of people like to call them. So how can we understand that and the role of intellectuals within those uh, countries? You know, there is a, a Turkish saying, once, you know, a, 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 a Turkish soldier ask a sheikh, what is the meaning of it is a, you know, it is a, a part of Quran. Then the Sheikh told him that Sana Bilirim bin Bilirin and Allah Bilirian. It means that I don't know and you don't know. In fact, either God doesn't know. Now this is the Gulf. The Gulf is just, you know, a, a, I mean a, a tanks of money. You know, and uh, all the regimes in the Gulf are uh, yani, <clears throat> designed by the British imperialism in 1970, in the beginning of 1970, and the Saudi Arabia is before them, but it is designed by imperialism. It is second edition of Sykes-Picot. If Sykes-Picot 1916, this is the second edition. <clears throat> they believe, by the way, that the, the oil is for the people or the, the regimes who discover it. They persuaded of that. And also, 
in the development studies in Britain, if you like, there is a saying which says that how come that our oil existed in their countries? And which means that they consider our oil is theirs, by the way. Now, those regimes, you know, I mean, oriented by the, the uh, I mean, the politics of imperialism, especially the United States imperialism. If you remember, or in the, uh, if you know the book of, uh, I mean, the, <clears throat> the killing uh, economist or something like that, I did not remember the, the name of the book. Anyway, that it is an American writer who wrote a book about, you know, the uh, uh, the relationship between the United States and, you know, third world countries. And uh, he mentioned, or he in, in part of it, he talked about the Saudi Arabia. And he said that after 1973, I mean, the high, uh, I mean, rising of oil uh, prices, then uh, the United States was thinking that how to re retake the, 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 the money or the surplus of the, of the oil. And they said that we have to pay civil Saudi Arabia so as to, to build for them, you know, roads and, you know, cities, uh, buildings, etc., etc. Or the Saudi regime accept except a, a, a very Wahhabi sheikh in, of, the, of the family. And they said that, okay, they, they, they said that we have to know how, يعني, what, what is his uh, I mean, relation or position towards women. Uh, they found that this man likes women of red hair. And they found a, a Swedish lady working in the uh, Swedish airlines. And he, she and her hus husband agree and you know he he signed after that. That's why those regimes have no political, uh, I mean, plan or an economic plan, not at all. They are designed or or they are oriented by by uh, imperialism. That's why I was trying to understand. Yani, one of the of the of the politics you might say that they are playing a, a role of imperialism, if you like. Why, well, you know, if you go to Lenin's, you know, five conditions or five lines on imperialism, it is not applied to them. But at the same time, they are playing that role. By the way, you are from Libya and those regimes, you know, attacked Libya in, 19, in, in 2011. They, they, uh, they spent two trillion dollars to destroy the Arab republics. Uh, they, I mean, uh, they bought land in in Sudan for for the the, the for the sheikhs there, and they built a new uh, big farm, and they they own the land. Not you know this is a new form of colonialism. If you like it is a, a it is a, a colonialism which bought the bought the land, and the products of the of those farms are directly you know exported from the from Sudan or from other parts of Africa to to those uh, countries. Uh, as for politics, you know that they are doing or uh, or applying the all the, the 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 plans or the the yes the plans of of imperialism. Like to take take as an example that uh, United Arab Emirates. If you look at their politics, it is part of the Zionist regime. The same policies, very open to the to the Zionist regime, and at the same time, you know. It is the it depends on and and very very open I mean uh, market and also they are trying to control uh, ports all over uh, in, in many parts of of the of the of the world. Anyway, regarding the uh, or why why Britain established those organizations or those uh, entities, it is because at that time between 1960 and 1970, there was a new active, uh, very active uh, nationalist currents in, door, in those countries related or, you know, influenced by Nasser. And so as to, you know, to, to, to wipe this current, the, the uh, British imperialism, you know, uh, supported this sheikh and that sheikh so as to build their own, uh, I mean, uh, uh, their own regimes. That's why briefly they designed to be against Arab nationalism and against Arab unity. By the way, concerning Libya, in 19, I think, 74 or 75, 
the 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 leader or the the president of United Arab Emirates went to Libya, uh, so as to pick some money from Qatar. And I have the the picture of the, of this man and his children in the airport of uh, of uh, I mean uh, I think Benghazi or Tarabus, Tripoli. That's why, I mean, briefly, they uh, they are they are very dependent and they are very anti-Arab nation, Arab, uh, uh, I mean, nationalism, and I mean, or if you like to make, to make it more understandable against Aruba. No, uh, indeed, um, I think that the path of development for Libya and UAE really resembles how one country decided to do a sovereign nationalist development as opposed to kind of capitalist or imperialist development. And one faced sanctions and isolation from the global community. The other one was empowered and given funds and continued to uh, roam the global market, if, uh, you know, and that is UAE. So, um, yeah, and I guess history plays a role in why were they allowed and empowered to do such things and Libya was sanctioned and uh, brutalized for many, many decades. But uh, there is a I, I, I will from... send. I will send to you my book about this issue with uh, Wala in English. Wonderful, yeah. great, thanks. Um, so there's a question from Azhar, who is a lecturer of political science in Pakistan. Uh, the question reads: So my question is one of the views that has emerged after October seven that Hamas has made a strategic miscalculation and it's responsible for what's happening to people in Gaza. How do you respond to it? Allah, sorry, Azhar. Very sorry. It is the first time that we defeated this enemy. By the way, if you think as, an, as a guerrilla fighter, the guerrilla fighter, you know, uh, never designed a very strong and large and, you know, extended theory how to fight here and there. The guerrilla fighters are just, you know, when the time or the chance or the moment is ready, he did it. And the, the, this is the most important thing of all this, of the, I mean, the 7th of, of October. By the way, and for sure, we, we lost a lot of, 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 of I mean, uh, civil people. But if you go back to all the wars all over the world, and, and all, the, all the wars in, in the world were, I mean, and, uh, there, uh, there is a lot of victims, more and more and more than others. The problem here to, to, to Mr. Azhar, he must think as for as that 7th of, of October was the guerrilla fighters defeated the occupation. In the 8th of October, the 75 Arab and Islamic regimes designed to support the occupation, designed to support the regime. Then the, directly they started against us the second day. And that's why he must go back to the 11th of November 2023, the, the conference in Riyadh, all the 75 regimes, all of them went to Saudi Arabia, which is Saudi Arabia, as Nasser said once, it is a regime designed against Arab nationalism, against Europe. They went there and oh, what they said, what they did, all what they said that we pick or ask the United Nations to pick or ask the, the Zionist regime to not kill the Palestinians. That's it. Since that time until now, this is their policy. Then Mr. Azhar must think of that, of this, that he must make a revolution or he must, must fight those normalizers who are betraying, if he likes Islam as a Muslim, he's betraying nationalism, they betraying humanity, they, they are betraying everything. And there was a follow-up question uh, from uh, also from Mr. Azhar Imran. The second question, as an academic sit sitting in Pakistan, what are the possible ways or strategies to contribute to Palestinian cause? Uh, to, liberate, to, liberate, to liberate Pakistan. Yani, it is the same for the Arab uh, Arab. By the way, uh, yani, Mr. Azhar reminds me of the following. While I am thinking why the Arab regimes <coughs> did not, I mean, I mean, support the Palestinians, because I think that there is a co cohabitation between the regimes, the uh, political parties, and e uh, the media, and even also the, 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 the masses. 
all of them are working according to the ideology or to, to, to the orders of the regimes and the regimes are you know normalize, normalizing regimes that's why if any many many people if you like to give another example that are think that the Iraqis are uh, you know supporting Palestine and you know attacking the Zionist regime etc etc this is a joke because Iraq is occupied by the the, the, the United States occupied by Turkey and I I wrote to them that when you liberate Iraq you will be very close to Palestine without that it is in fact just uh, just as, as a joke by the way, the Iraqis <laughs> said that they, you know, bombed the airport, uh, the Ben Gurion airport. We call it the, uh, the airport of Valid, the Palestinian city. From my home, I, uh, you know, from the mountain here, I can see the airport itself, you know, because it's very close and very short, very, very, I mean, uh, small area. That's why I think that all the Arab regimes, or the Arab masses, if you like, the academics or intellectuals, or the, the Islamic intellectuals and masses, they must liberate, liberate themselves. After that, they will be very close to us. Um, a question from uh, Amarit Randai. So uh, it's related again to two Gulf countries, but given what's currently happened and has happened in August 2023, so my question is about Gulf states and how both the UAE and Saudi Arabia are now members of the BRICS 10. Do you think this alternative option for development via China, Russia, and Iran with the BRICS will open up space for anti-imperialist groups in the Gulf states to fight against the US-led imperialism camp? It seems like the Gulf states have a little wiggle room now to maneuver. You know, uh, Bin Salman, Put one link, uh, one leg uh, with the BRICS and the other leg leg with with India, or with America, if you like, or, or if you like, with Indian and American imperialisms. Because India is a new imperialism, by the way, they are jumping uh, too fast to be imperialist. Now, by by the way, we have to put in mind that BRICS is not a progressive or is not a socialist. Uh, I mean, uh, block. It is a capitalist block. Even China, if you like, it is between. And accordingly, they are fighting or they are competing with the uh, with the imperialist bloc for the world market. Uh, and by the way, also that uh, even China still insists to maintain, you know, the capitalist I mean, uh, system because their interests with the United States, their exports to the United States, uh, is is too 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 big. That's why you should we sh we shouldn't expect from them, you know, a very progressive step towards uh, I mean the the third world in general. Now the the Gulf regimes are you know in fact trying to be here and there in both places if you like. Saudi Arabia uh, would like to 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 build a good relationship with with China because you know China is the most largest importer of of uh, of oil, and the United States you know I think now any import from Saudi Arabia very tiny uh, tiny amount of of of, of oil. Then in the form of, of of interest, Saudi Arabia is really uh, I mean keen to have some relationship economic relationship, but at the same time. The Saudis, uh, I mean, must try to find dollars so as to buy from the United States weapons, et cetera, et cetera. Which means that if they will use the, uh, I mean, yuan, or if there will be a new, uh, I mean, currency for the BRICS, uh, all the countries which is dependent, depends on the United States, either in, I mean, civil materials or products or uh, they need, uh, I mean, good ones. They have to find ways to have dollars so as to buy from the United States by dollars. That's why uh, I I don't think that you know this is a clever step from the countries of of, of the Gulf, but uh, it is the matter of you know they are obliged to, I mean, to build some co economic relations with the with the with the BRICS. And by the way, if you like, we, yani BRICS accepted Egypt, accepted the United Arab Emirates, but did not accept Algiers. 
why Algeria is much better, at least politically, than the other those countries, which means that the matter, the the, the issue of, of BRICS is a pragmatism, a pragmatism more than you know it is the matter of you know ideology or progressive ideology or socialist ideology, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Thanks, uh, I have a question related to political Islam. So if you are uh, familiar or the listeners are familiar with the work of Samir Amin, he he, uh, he calls uh, political Islam, particularly the, excuse me, the Muslim Brotherhood, um, kind of uh, uh, the cultural facade of imperialism in the region um, and their role, um, essentially, be it in power or even in society politics and overall. So uh, how can we understand from an intellectual perspective their role in uh, in, uh, in envisioning Palestine resistance for Palestine or the promotion of the Palestinian cause? So political Islam and Palestine. Uh, in fact, uh, I uh, before 20 years, I was using the term, of, uh, I mean, political Islam. But later I prefer to, to say that they politicized the uh, religion. Which is which is you know uh, not only between the Muslims, the new conservatives in America is a politicized religion. Religion, the Zionists are a politicized religion. Bolsonaro in Brasilia was a politicized religion. The Hindus of you know uh, Modi is a politicized religion. Uh, the people who use religion for the sake of their own you know I mean class or political uh, position. Uh, Samir Amin very great in, in, in the issue of political economy, but uh, unfortunately regarding Arab situation, he's not so, I mean, deep, if you like. Now, regarding the, uh, yeah, he and other people call it, you know, political Islam, we have the tips to differentiate, first of all, between politicized religion and, you know, normal or, you know, natural uh, believing this one thing. The other thing also, we have to differentiate between, uh, I mean, uh, Islamists who are fighting as a jihadi, and you know uh, the the political Islamics or the, the I mean, the political religion of uh, Al Qaeda of uh, ISIS, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Because I think I my 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 idea is that you know the. Uh, ISIS and Al Qaeda are manufactured by the imperialists, and that's why I called it, you know, the 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 uh, uh, Oriental uh, or the, uh, the terrorist Orientalism. It is a new version of terrorism. Uh, or, or, I mean, of or, or Orientalism designed in the the uh, in the imperialist uh, centers. And its material, human material, financial material, are from the Arab and Islamic, uh, I mean, countries. Uh, I wrote in 19, if you like, uh, 1996, a small booklet about Hamas and about the, when I was called them, you know, political Islam. And I divide the, those groups, each group into two parts. The leadership is a merchant politicized religion, but the, the base or the, I mean, the, the, the fighters are uh, yani Muslim nationalists, if you like. And I think what's happened in, in, in Gaza in the last, uh, I mean, in the 7th of uh, Tishreen or the 7th of October, uh, approved my idea that you know, those people are nationalist fighters. They, they believe in God. It's so, it's so right. And I think that when, when you listen to, to uh, Yahya Sinwar, uh, he's, trying, he's saying something different. Yani he said that we, we are not against people who did not believe in God. We are, did not, we are not against communists, etc., etc. He's different from Ismail Haniya. In 2010, I, show, I, I, yani, I saw a, a, a TV program. There was a conference for Muslims in Gaza. And Ismail Haniya repeated it twice that our enemy is America and the secular people. He said it, and I I was listening. Uh, Sinwar is different, but anyways, I think that now it is the it is the if you like the the challenge 
of Hamas or and jihad uh, of those people so as to, to, to prove also to the world, to the world who are supporting us, that we are, a, a, I mean, a people who are to a certain extent open, not closed and not against, you know, uh, other religions, etc., etc. It depends, but in general, I think that the the new development or the new uh, I mean uh, I mean so the seventh of October is a very, very great lesson, which you know push those people to develop and also push us and Samir Amin to understand those, this phenomena in a different manner than he was you know uh, accepted you know or uh, I mean thinking before. Okay, I have uh, one more question. Uh, going back to land day, and also we know that there is more annexation and land grab that is uh, continuously happening um, and increasingly too in the West Bank. Um, at the same time, there are many individual uh, operations also going back to the legacy of, of Basil al-A'raj, the engaged intellectual. And you wrote a whole book about uh, this aspect also of individual operations and the uh, impact that can have in giving us also uh, a future for the liberation of Palestine. So I just want to hear your thoughts about this and maybe also touching a little bit about the events unfolding in Jordan. For the past few days, we are seeing uh, uh, mass protests taking place uh, in Amman around the embassy, um, the Zionist embassy, and people are pushing uh, back against the uh, Jordanian regime. So any uh, hopeful uh, thoughts or reflections uh, about that? Yeah. <clears throat> First of all, about the individual operations, as I mentioned in the speech, that you know, <clears throat> it is a new tool so as to push the ceiling of the of the of the of the public resistance. I mean, up and up until it became a large phenomenon. In addition to that, if you like, <clears throat> I believe that even the fifth of October is not the, the 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 war of liberation. It is a beginning, if you like, of the war of, of liberation. Because to liberate Palestine, we must put in mind that we are fighting the world order. We are fighting imperialism, imperialism, the Zionist Arab regimes, Islamic Zionist regimes as well, and also the, 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 the Zionist, Zionist itself, uh, regime itself. Uh, <clears throat> that's why the individual operations, if it is by an individual like uh, Basel, or if it is, you know, an activity of this group or, or, or of members of this group or that is much better than to fight with the with the with the uh, with the uh, Zionist army with his tanks and with his, with his you know uh, helicopters etc etc. Yani, it is a strike and flee. This is the other buhruk. Yani. This is the that's why before two years when this phenomenon started in Jenin and in Tulkarim, uh, my idea was that we shouldn't, you know, mo wo oh, I mean, march in the streets with our weapons and they are pictured everybody and they collect or pick the people like this. The last operation in a, in a village beside my village, it's called Derbzia. And the fighter, you know, who, who, who you know, uh, killed and wounded about seven uh, Israeli soldiers. And they failed to, 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 to challenge him until they used the helicopter, the Apache. Those are the real, I mean, uh, guerrilla uh, operations. And it doesn't cost us a lot. And it costs them, costs them a lot. Uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, one of the aspects of some, of some activities of, you know, of groups here in the West Bank, that they are trying to show that we are the fighters. But this is not, I mean, the proper the proper policy or tactic in fighting this occupation who have all this, you know, I mean, uh, weapons, uh, technolo high tech, technological, uh, I mean, uh, machines, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and I think that, yani, our role, briefly, if you like, our role is that we must keep the, 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 the cause alive with the minimum victims or sacrifices until 
the the situation change in the Arab countries because the the Zionist regime here is not only against Palestine. If it is against Palestine, Palestine is under occupation. It's finished. It is against the whole region. That's why the Zionist regime is a strategic investment by imperialism in, I mean, in the Arab countries, in the Arab regime, so as to, I mean, support or, uh, I mean, increase the accumulation, which is, I think, Ali, uh, Ali like this, you know, too much, you know, the issue of oh, accumulation. They are accumulated on it for the imperialism, for imperialism. Now, regarding Jordan, it is not enough. To tell you the truth, it is not enough. Because there was, you know, and you know that a lot of, of vegetables were, you know, I mean, sent from Jordan to the to the to the to the uh, Zionist regime. And I wrote it that you have to shoot them. That's it. You have to shoot them. Because, you know, just to to pick or to, to tell the merchant that the police did, did not, you know, send the, uh, I mean, uh, food to the to the occupation. This is, this is not a, a, a real, I mean, resistance. That's why you know, I think that the, the, the engaged intellectual must be against this. This is good, but, you know, the Jordanian people are, are not, uh, I mean, a people of Holland or a people from uh, of France. They are not in solidarity with, with us. They are part of us and we are part of them. That's why it is good, but it is, it is not enough. And that's why I'm still seeing, is thinking that, you know, still even in Jordan, the uh, cohabitation between the regime, the political forces, and the media and the masses are, I mean, uh, uh, working or fighting or acting according to the policies of the, of the, uh, of the Zionized Arab, uh, Arab regimes. And for sure, it is not enough. I hope that it will develop, I mean, more and more. Yesterday, I wrote that the, uh, as long as the oil airplanes in the occupation are designed or produced or manufactured in, in the United States, and they are attacking Yemen, attacking Syria, attacking Gaza, etc., then the Arab, you know, uh, airplanes or, I mean, jet fighters must be, you know, filled of goods and sent to Israel. Well, uh, any last remark? Okay, I'll, uh, I'll conclude the session. So uh, thank you so, so, so much, uh, Dr. Adil Samara, for your uh, your brief in, uh, intervention and also answering all of our queries. Um, um, and also thank you all attendees uh, for being here uh, tonight. And I apologize for starting relatively late. And also know that the hour right now is also late for uh, people who are here in uh, Northern Africa, Southwest Asia. But I just want to share... Um, um, the schedule for the upcoming weeks. And I think because of uh, summertime or, or, or daylight saving has shifted in different countries, but not across the whole world at the same time, just make sure when you see Palestine time, it literally means Palestine time, not West Jerusalem. Um, and so that's uh, one, one thing to note. So uh, next week on the 8th of April, uh, 9 p.m., uh, it's going to be uh, anti-imperialist feminism and all of the attendees who were here today and also uh, will get an email invitation to register for that uh, session. Uh, by the way, in fact, I, I prepared a lot of information, but what's happened that my, uh, my uh, I mean, machine or typewriter did not, you know, uh, event link. And that's why I, I summarized them as much as possible and made, it, made them by handwriting. It was fantastic summary. It was great. And we do have one uh, one last question. Do we have a tiny bit more of time just to to go ahead with the last question, Isam? Is that okay? So yeah, just, sure. uh, if, if, if it's okay with yeah. Alan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. I am here. I am I am here till the morning. Don't mind. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we won't take much of your time, but there is a question coming from the US. And uh, they are curious. Um if you uh, to to know your thoughts about where the empire is ideologically or politically vulnerable, any thoughts you'd like to share with activists in the U.S.? So, what do you think uh, about what's uh, what's happening in the U.S. now? Any other, you know, do you see uh, where do you see it going in ideologically and politically? And any advice or tips for activists who are organizing for Palestine in the U.S.? You know that. Uh... I don't think that is the empire, which is, you know, in contradiction with the, you know, the ideas of uh, of uh, Negri and uh, 
is a friend, I mean, uh, the Italian people. Uh, it is a nationalist state, by the way. It passed er an era of globalization, and now it is returning to be a nationalist state, uh, especially under uh, Trump. Uh, it is really uh, in decline. You know that uh, in, after 1945, you know, the United States production was about 45% of the world production. Then now it is about 19, which is really, there is a real, a real decline, it, it is clear. In addition to their defeat in Afghanistan, but not in Iraq, by the way. I doubt because they are still in Iraq. But anyway, now, <clears throat> the, the, we, the, and your question pushed me back to the ideas of the, if you like, of the West System Group, which is, you know, Arigi, Samir Amin, Gondar Frank, and uh, Wilrishtin, that the, the, the center of the world revolution must be or must start from the periphery and after that to the to the uh, center uh, which means that you know any form of boycotting any form of internal exchange between uh, the peripheral countries will cut or at least lessening the amount of you know i mean uh, wills which is you know either theft or i mean transfer to the to the center and at that time, the, the classes in the West who are bribed by imperialism or by thrifting or by unequal exchange will start, um, I mean, facing, a, a, I mean, a real uh, problems. The United States problem in, in Ukraine is the same while, despite of the fact that the United States, in fact, is exploiting Europe and fighting Russia to the last European, not only to the last Ukrainian. And it is, a, it is a market for the United States, but at the same time, they can't continue as it is now. I think that, I mean, people in the, in the United States who are supporting our cause, just if they are able to start or to build a lobby to challenge the Zionist lobby in the United States. This is very important. But unfortunately, as you know that the, policy, the Arab people, uh, I mean, uh, or the Arab citizens who are living in the United States, I mean, those from Egypt, from Syria, from Jordan, etc., are divided according to the, to the, to the division of the, of the regimes. I was in the, in the United States for several times, and we were trying to build something like that in Illinois, in uh, Glendale, in uh, Los Angeles. But uh, unfortunately, you know, that a lot of them are afraid of, of their regimes. If they return back to their, to their countries, they might be, you know, uh, interrogated or arrested, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But anyway, I think that those people, I mean, in the United States, must fight with the, uh, you know, with the Mexicans, with the, uh, you know, or with the Native, uh, I mean, uh, Americans, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to build a a, a third world block to challenge the, you know, the the the, the Zionist, uh, I mean, uh, the Zionist lobby. And I think the chance is good now because you know. I mean, the West and the Zionist regime uh, became very, I mean, uncovered. Their lies, their propaganda, their, uh, I mean, inhumanity, etc., etc. Thank you, Mr. Ali. Yeah, any questions? It's all right. I'm still uh, alive. No, no. Uh, we're going <laughs> to have to get you to take a break at some point, but. Uh... No, thank you so much, uh, Adel, for your time and for your energy. It's very uh, contagious in a good way. Um, and thank you, everyone, for attending this session. Uh, please uh, follow us on social media, and uh, you'll get emails and notifications about the upcoming sessions. Uh, thank you so much, and have a good uh, night or a good day. Um, thank you. Okay. Thank good you. Ramadan. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thank you.